Instagram reels, I feel like I have, I don't really have a love hate relationship with them, but I feel like a lot of people do. I, I just, it's so funny. I've been thinking a lot lately about how things feel so black and white in business sometimes. Like I think about this all the time with ads where you, it's funny to me that, you know, I'll log on to Instagram and I see simultaneously two different people being like, as are the devil and the other person being like, let me show you how to use the ads. And I'm just like, how can these two things be true? And it's so often because there's like no one right way to run a business. Like ads are fine. It's also fine to not run them. I didn't run them for years. I did great. Now I run them. I do great. Like, it's fine. It's fine. I swear. I kind of feel the same way about reels. So many people get so fired up about them. They're like, reels are amazing. Reels are terrible. They're a waste of time. They're the only thing you should be doing to grow your Instagram. And I'm like, duh, let's cut the noise, right? I think most of the time I just am looking to figure out how to cut the noise and trying not to consume so much content. So I was really hoping that today's episode would just be a one-stop shop for you if you're interested in reels. Maybe you've already started with reels, but you're not really seeing any traction. You're not sure how you're supposed to be making them for your business. Because more than anything today, I'm yes, I'm going to give you 10 reels tips, but I am really focusing on in this episode on reels tips for business owners. So you can find lots of great videos on YouTube and elsewhere that will teach you how to get more views from reels and how to get followers and comments or whatever, how to get viral reels. That's not this episode. This episode is about making sure that you're creating reels for your business that actually support and grow your business. I think that by implementing these tips, you will get a lot of views and followers and all of the things. But the purpose of my tips and of my business in general is just to make sure that I'm helping you to actually grow a sustainable business and trying to give you ideas of how to create content that works for you, even when you're not working. So that's really what I'm going to teach you in today's episode. I can't wait because I actually really enjoy talking about reels. I posted on Instagram um, the other day asking if anybody had any questions about about making reels and like easy reels tips and so many people responded. So at the end of today's episode, I'm actually going to share some of the top Q&As, um, top Qs and I'll give my A um, to those questions that I got on Instagram because I thought that they were really good ones. And throughout this episode, I'm going to sprinkle in a couple of little legal tips here and there, mostly pertaining to music because I do get questions from people asking me how you can use music legally on reels. So the only other news that I've got for you is that I've got something new and free coming for you in about 10 days um, from when you're listening to this episode. So you'll have to keep your eyes peeled for that. It is a free legal template that I'm going to have for you that was highly requested. I'm really excited about it. So make sure you keep your eyes peeled for that. Um, And I hope that you, if you're listening to this episode before Thanksgiving, I hope you have a nice Thanksgiving. I hope that you take some time off and and that you make something delicious and that you get some time to just rest and unplug. Um, I shared at the beginning of last week's episode, my thoughts on Black Friday sales or just my approach on them. I, I just don't do them. I choose not to participate in it. This week is like my favorite week of the year and I just wanna like, chill and be offline and um, my business is running in the background like I don't I'm doing fine so I just want to um, pass that on to you in case you're like feeling all the pressure I remember when I started my business I was like everybody else is running Black Friday sales my whole business is gonna tank because I'm not doing it and it's totally fine you can do it too so with that let's get into how to create reels on your terms of course Let's talk reels. I am so excited to talk reels because I feel like there's so much like misinformation and misunderstanding and like hot topic stuff. Like people are either so for them, so against them. Everybody thinks they've got the answer. But in today's episode, I kind of just want to give you like a fresh take on reels of a way to do these that actually makes sense if you own your own business and you're somebody who either doesn't have a lot of time or doesn't want to spend a lot of time on social media and you want to get the most bang for your buck. I'm all about trying to get like the most out of your time there and makes making sure that things that you do on social media actually support your business and make sense for your business. Because at the end of the day, I think we're here because we want to grow our online businesses. Obviously, there's a time and a place if you want to just like grow a social platform or something like that, that's cool. But that's not what I'm here to do. I'm here to grow a business. I think you probably are too. And so therefore, we want to make sure our reels actually fit into that. So some of the issues that I see that come up with reels, and then today I'm going to share 10 
Reels tips with you. I'm so excited. But some of the issues that um, come up with Reels are that people tend to have a lot of like angst around creating them because they feel like, I think they, I think people really build them up in their minds, right? So there's already this issue with video where like a lot of people are like, I have to be perfect on video. Hello. Um, but you know, they're like, I have to be perfect on video or I have to like, it has to be like highly stylized and produced and like really complicated and all of this kind of stuff. So there's a lot of that going on. On the flip side, we then have people who are doing reels that are only like trendy or for fun or they are sometimes a little bit pointless that I see um, and have really no purpose for your business, which is totally fine if that's what you want to do, right? But my concern is that for those of you who are like, I'm trying these reels, but they're not doing anything for my business. If you're only doing them in the like fun, trendy, no purpose category, that might be why, right? If you're just trying to do them to grow a following, then great, hats off to you. But like, if you're trying to grow your business, we have to do them differently. I see so many reels too that are just like not helpful at all. Like either they're about the person who's making the reel or just about something completely unrelated to like what they do, or I don't really learn anything. Um, if I don't learn anything on screen for the reel itself, sometimes I go to check out the caption, there's not even anything there. So having helpful reels is, is really important and something we're gonna talk about a lot today. I also see issues with like the way people kind of set them up, the calls to action, not asking people to engage, not asking people to take the next step, not asking people to read, um, and really having reels that don't have any point or like service in your business. So we're going to spend a lot of time talking today about making reels that make sense for your online business to actually help you grow your online business and not just a bunch of random comments or followers or whatever. We want you to get targeted followers. Um, we want you to get people in your community who make sense and who you enjoy being around, who really need you and want to consume your content and who you start training to engage, right? Because that's what's really important in the social media landscape. So I wanted to just share like some quick background with you before I hop into the 10 Reels tips today. Like I like I had a really funny attitude about Reels um, up until I don't know when, a while back. And so when Reels first started, I held off on them because I thought that it was stupid to stand there and point to stuff on screen because the first kinds of reels that I ever saw were like the reels that would have like really fast music and then would have this like bam 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 and then people would just be like pointing to the screen and giving tips and I was just like I don't understand it you know I didn't really I didn't really get it like I, I guess I'm an old lady at heart but like any new technology I was just like what what is this it seems so silly and seems so trendy um but a couple things happened one I think like reels themselves evolved but also just frankly Instagram has made it very clear that this is what they're prioritizing and like I always say like it's a choice to participate in Instagram nobody has to be on Instagram it's a free tool that we can use to market our businesses so but as long as I'm choosing to be there I want to be there in a way that makes sense for my business and if that's like the game like it's like Instagram is the game and they and then these are the rules that they give us right because we don't dictate any of it but they are clearly prioritizing this in the rule book and so I'm like okay well if I'm gonna be here I am strategic AF and so I am like I if I'm gonna be here I'm gonna make my time worth it for my business right I'm not here to mess around so you can keep like throwing time into posts and throwing time into stories which just appear in 24 hours um and instagram's not going to prioritize that it's not going to get it out to people so if i'm really there to try to reach new audiences to nurture the one that i already have to connect with people and just kind of have fun show different parts of my personality and this is what instagram's prioritizing fine, I'll try it. <laughs> so I tried it. I decided to like, I think maybe over the summer I hopped in and I just started playing with it and seeing how it went. Right. I didn't really think it was going to be very helpful to my business, but when I started experimenting with it, I started by experimenting and have continued to experiment with what I call evergreen reels. So those are reels that are educational or that are like familiarizing to my brand or my product or my freebie, like my legal workshop. And it's something that would work for me whether somebody watched my reel today 
or six months from now, right? So I wanted to see like if I put those kinds of reels out there, does it work? Or is this just for people who are doing like dance moves and like pointing at the screen and all that kind of stuff? And what I ended up seeing was that I got um, not only a ton of new followers because Instagram was prioritizing this again, and I don't really care so much about that. One thing that was interesting to me though was that the followers like as I was checking and just seeing like wow lots of new people are pouring in they were definitely people who fit more of the kind of you know person I'm looking for looking to connect with on Instagram so I thought that was really interesting but what was even more interesting to me as a businesswoman was that I was starting to get emails from people who were purchasing my products and when I asked them and give them a little survey asking like how you found me and all this kind of stuff they they said actually I found your reel uh in your reel you said watch this workshop I watched your workshop I bought your bundle I was like wow that's actually starting to work so people were doing it and they what's most important to me is that these people are like really cool and they definitely fit my ideal customer profile and there are people I want to work with and have in my community and I want to help that I'm here to help and so yeah it just seemed like it was working and I thought that was really cool so it definitely leads to consistent new follower growth, I would say, um, on Instagram when you're consistent with them. Although I find that people find the reels kind of uh, ongoing, like they kind of keep rolling. Sometimes they pick up steam later if audio starts to trend or something, somebody picks up on it. Sometimes somebody will share it and then all of a sudden it'll kind of take off. So they're interesting. They're new. It's an experiment, as if you've listened to On Your Terms before, you know that I talk a lot about being a scientist and experimenting in your business, and I believe in just like trying things out, tracking the data, seeing if you like it, it isn't fun for you. If you feel like you're forcing it, you know, it's not so fun. I didn't feel so much like I was forcing it. It was kind of like, well, I wouldn't do this if Instagram wasn't prioritizing it, but let me try it. And then once I tried it, I liked it, so it was fine. Um, I don't mind making a fool of myself. I don't take it too seriously, so it's fine. The other thing is that, and then I learned in the process before I get into these tips, is that if you run Facebook ads, having things like reels or video in general on Instagram can help you because it not only pulls in new people and grows your audience, which is super helpful um, if you run ads to like warm audiences or lookalike audiences, but it also helps because once people watch your video for like a certain number of seconds, you can actually target audiences that have watched your videos. So even if they don't follow you, they might start to get targeted with your Facebook ads. So I'm always trying to think about that as well. So I find I found that part really interesting. Okay, so what are 10 ways that you can, easy reels tips, ways that you can make reels that are fun, that are actually helpful to your business, that don't drive you crazy, that don't take hours to make. Like seriously, I spend a couple minutes on each one. It's no joke. <laughs> I don't take them very seriously. Like just have fun. I would I really highly encourage you to spend the bulk of your time putting your energy in terms of content into things that are more evergreen and that could be potentially SEO driven. So something that people can find online, like by Googling something or by being on YouTube or listening to podcasts, I would really encourage you to spend your time. So we're just talking like extra bonus time, bonus content creation time here. But it's important that if you want to make reels that you, I think, integrate these 10 tips. So tip number one is, of course, <laughs> I have to start out with a legal tip, but don't worry, none of the rest are legal. I have to tell you that, you know, a lot of people will ask me about music for reels. So they'll say like, how am I allowed to use music for different kinds of reels? Is it okay to grab clips? Am I allowed to use this song? Can I do this? Whatever. So remember that music falls under copyright, right? So music is subject to copyright law and it has copyright protection built in to whoever is the, the owner of that work. Um, and you can only use music that you have like the permission or a license to use. So since we're talking about reels, we're talking about Instagram. And so since you're using Instagram, you're looking to what Instagram provides you by their audio feature, you know, like the little audio tab inside of reels, all the audio that's provided by Instagram they have audio in there that either they have the permission or license to use from the artist themselves or the record label or whatever, whoever owns the music. However, some people like add in their own audio and it could be, they could be uploading unlicensed music. And then when you go to somebody else's reel and you save their audio and you reuse it, you could be inadvertently reusing music that you're not allowed to use. So what kind of music then is legal to add to a reel? Well, this is what Instagram tells us. 
Instagram says you can record a reel with your own original audio, with original audio by another reels creator, or with music from the Instagram music library using the audio tool in reels. So the last one was what I was just talking about, which is when you go to the audio tab, you're just looking in the audio that's provided directly from Instagram. So I'm not talking about audio that's from another creator, but uh, music that's provided directly from Instagram from the artist, like it's a whole song, and you're just picking a section of that song, that kind of thing is okay. When another Reels creator uploads their own original audio, that's also okay. But remember, it has to be original to them and something that they own copyright and not just something that they're like recording from TV or a show or something. They don't own that just because they uploaded it to Instagram. So with original audio by another Reels creator, that's the second way that Instagram said it's okay. The third way um, that Instagram says it's okay, of course, is for you to record a Reel with your own original audio. So that would look like maybe a voiceover or a video that you record just on your own, you know, walking around the house giving tips or something like that. Um, Instagram Reels now has the voiceover feature, so you can actually upload a video where maybe you're not even in the video, but then you can actually um, just do the voiceover work in that video. So that would be an example where obviously it's okay to use your own original audio. Okay, tip number two is all about making sure that we think evergreen. I want you to think evergreen whenever you're creating reels or at least I would say the bulk of the reels that you create should be done so from an evergreen perspective. So that means creating reels that will continue to work for you in days, weeks, months, years, (laughs) however long reels are around. I don't know. But this is kind of how I approach um, when I create videos and blog posts and everything else and and podcasts is that these are things that are going to have a long shelf life. Um, So unlike Instagram stories, which often feel like you're kind of dumping content down the Instagram toilet um, because they disappear in 24 hours, we we have this opportunity with reels to allow something to stick around and have a little bit more staying power, right? So we can create reels that have a call to action at the end of them that are either to like join a freebie, to join a Facebook group, to listen to your podcast, to watch your YouTube episode, to um, to DM you, you know, to, to buy your product if you're if you're like selling evergreen products, whatever it is. But just think about it from the perspective of like, is this piece of content going to work for me for a while or am I putting all of this effort into something that's not going to help me in the long run. My third tip is to use Reels to allow people to get to know you, to get to see your personality. I mean, Reels are on video, so it's kind of a no-brainer here that we can get to know you better through video than we can through any sort of written post or hiding behind a picture or something like that. So it doesn't technically mean that you always have to show your face. I think there are many different ways to get to know you and your personality, maybe some of your hobbies, some behind the scenes work, um, some of the like implementation or like walk the walk type of stuff. So I like to see um, reels when people show like what they're doing with their clients or client work um, or how they integrate some of the things that they teach other people. Like I love these things that people have started doing with reels um, where they're kind of like mini vlogs and they're teaching people throughout the day to like take cozy moments or how to practice self-care and how to integrate these tips into their business. And they're showing how they do it through reels because it's a a way to just tell a beautiful visual story. Um, And I think it's just a cool way to get like a peek into people's day. And they're so short, you know, the little bite sized ways to get to know people. But I also have liked seeing different parts of people's personality, people being playful, people being calm, like calming and reassuring and reels. Not all reels need to be super hyper and jumping around. Um, You know, you see a lot of people who've gotten really popular with reels because they're like, oh, like really manic and they're jumping around and they're like singing and dancing and clapping and doing tons of transitions. And like, it's super cool and it gets a lot of attention, but just know that it's also okay if like that's not either your style or that wouldn't make sense for your business or you don't feel comfortable yet or whatever or ever. Um, But there are ways to show your personality through reels. But just remember that part of the purpose of creating reels is to show your personality. So as you're planning them and making them evergreen and making them make sense for your business, you want to make sure that you're showing little bits and pieces of your personality here and there. 
Tip number four is to have a call to action on the screen to read the caption, which is especially important for short reels. So I think when reels started, people were really trying to put like all of the content, all of the information on the screen itself, and it could get really cluttered and things could go really fast. And people didn't know yet that you can like just press and hold your finger on the screen and it'll pause it. But that's why I think whenever you're doing short reels, where the point of the reel is probably more just to get someone's attention, we want to put a call to action on the screen itself um, that says read the caption and maybe has like a finger pointing down or an arrow or use whatever you want. So I think that um, you could also do this in a way that says like um, follow like or it says like read the caption for tip number four. Like if you were or if you were doing like four tips to whatever or four myths or something like this, you could also share the first three on the screen and then say read the caption for the fourth one or like read the caption for the most important one you don't want to miss or you know something like this where you could kind of almost entice the person to want to click on the caption to read more. And then in the caption itself, you're going to have a call to action to the next step, whether it's to engage with you, to contact you, to sign up for something, to download something, whatever it is. So it's really important that we get used to um, practicing having these calls to action really consistently. The other thing that you can have on the screen is a follow for X, like whatever kind of tips that you give. So remember with anything related to reels, you want to keep the text really, really short because it's just a small screen and people, things are moving really quickly. So you don't want to use like long sentences and stuff like this. It might not be the, like your English teacher's favorite grammar of all time, but you want to use like short little quips on the screen that say like follow for legal tips or like follow for online legal tips or something like this. Um, like that's what I would do. And you, that way you let the person know like, hey, I share other kinds of content like this. I also think that that's really helpful if you're talking about something that's maybe a little bit like tangentially related to what you do and you want to let people know what you do do so that they go and follow you and learn more. So I think I see the most like follower growth from Reels whenever I share something that says, you know, follow, follow me for um, legal and business tips for, for or legal and business for online legal tips for online businesses. Yeah. So I'll say something like that. Uh, trust me, I've done it. Um, but I, I say that at the end of a reel. And then I see that a lot of people will tend to follow who are, again, in my ideal client, you know, profile. So that can be really, really helpful. Have you ever felt lost about where to begin with the legal side of protecting your online business? Some people say you can just wing it at the beginning and get officially set up later. Not a good idea, by the way. Whether you're afraid to even start working with clients because you don't want to do something wrong legally and then get in trouble, or your business is growing and you sort of forgot to take care of the legal pieces, I've got you. I don't want you to live in fear of the internet police coming after you and your business, but you do have to do certain things and get certain things in place in order to legally and safely run your business online. As much as it just feels like an unregulated wild, wild west online, that is very much not the case. As an attorney turned entrepreneur and former corporate litigator, I can assure you that there are rules. There are real steps that everybody who runs or starts an online business needs to take. And you're not behind at all. We can get you set up and following the rules right away. In fact, we can even do it today. I want to teach you the five very simple steps to take to legally protect and grow your online business. You don't need an MBA to be a successful entrepreneur and stay out of legal hot water, but you do need to dot your legal I's and cross your T's in a few key areas that can't be skipped. That's exactly what I'll teach you in my free one hour legal workshop called five steps to legally protect and grow your online business. Just head to mylegalworkshop.com, drop in your email address, pick the time, and I'll send you a link to watch the workshop video whenever you have time. This is the best place to begin if you're just getting started legally legitimizing your business. So head on over to mylegalworkshop.com and sign up to watch five steps to legally protect and grow your online business now. Tip number five is to withhold a tip or the point that you're trying to do in um, the video it, to put it in the caption, right? So again, kind of enticing people to like go and read the caption because the captions where we're going to have the opportunity to really spell out things enough that we're going to be able to get people to take the next step because 
in a reel unless you have uh, access to the 60 second reel and unless you also are making like completely your own reels where you're like talking people through things in a methodical way like telling them who you are touching on a pain point touching on a desire um, like teaching them a little something and then telling them about the next step which is hard to do in a reel because of how fast they are um and those reels just don't tend to get nearly as much attention. Um, so if you're not doing that, then really the captions kind of like your only place to be able to like nurture somebody enough in order to get them to take the next step. So for example, I might have like a short reel that's just a kitschy, like funny reel about like a mistake I see people making when legally protecting their online businesses or not legally protecting their online businesses. And I'm just pointing out this mistake in the reel. And then I say, read the caption and I talk about why that mistake is so big. Um, I talk about the way that you're supposed to do it. And then I would tell people I have a free legal workshop called Five Steps to Legally Protect and Grow Your Online Business that you can watch to make sure you not only don't make this mistake, but avoid these other ones as well. And then have my call to action to come watch the legal workshop. So it just needs a bit more time and development than the amount that I think that you can do in the reel itself, right? It would really have to be like a no brainer thing, I think, um, especially because you have to remember that people, new people might be finding you through reels too. So they might take a little bit more time, which is like totally normal and natural. So yeah, I would make sure that we're doing whatever we can do creatively to get people to read, read the caption, um, and then really using that as a targeted copywriting space. Like don't, this is not the place to just put a couple like words and call it a day or some flowery thing to like drop an emoji or whatever, unless that's really your goal. I think it's the place to really walk these through. I would rather see you post fewer reels that are more targeted and evergreens that actually like walk people through certain things and get them to watch your free webinar or download your free thing or get in your free group or whatever. Um, the kind of the next nurturing step, get on your email list. Um, I would rather see you do that less often and really take the time to develop these right. Okay. Tip number six is to have fun with them while also making them educational and familiarizing, meaning getting to know either your brand or your product or both, right? So you don't have to do lip sync or voiceover reels or the kind of more kitschy reels that you see if you don't want to, right? You can do original ones too. Like I was just saying, I think they can be a little bit more work where, you know, if I was to do a reel that was like six ways that you should do this, and then I had to go do like six video clips teaching you and then have at the end a call to action to my workshop, I think that could be a really impactful reel. It would also take more time. I know that to the, in the Instagram algorithm or whatever it is, we don't get as many views for that or whatever. I haven't really played with this myself too much yet in the sense that I don't care how many views something would get. I'm more interested in whether it gets to the right people, whether it's helpful, whether it converts, all of that. So I would be curious how that would go. But just know like there's there's no one way to do these. I think the point is just to have them be helpful. So if you do the lip sync or voiceover ones and or like a trendy one or something like this, then again, we want to go to that caption. The caption can still be educational and helpful. The caption can still be the place where they get familiar with your product. Um, you can also do both, right? So sometimes I will teach something in the caption and then introduce myself because I'm kind of doing it under the idea that a lot of new people might be finding me this way. So I'm saying, hey, I'm Sam. I'm an attorney turned entrepreneur. This is what I do. This is how I help people. And then I'm letting them know about my freebie and the call to action. So you can have fun with them while also making them educational and familiarizing people to your brand. But most often when I hear people saying like, I don't see anything from them or I don't get anything out of it. I don't think it's helping my business. I go over and I look and like they're they're cute reels, but they just have nothing to do with your business. So it's like, yeah, because it doesn't make sense that somebody would want to go follow you or you don't have these calls to action or you're not telling people to read the caption or I go look at your caption and it's one sentence um, or there's no call to action in your caption. Like there are just so many of these like little puzzle pieces um, that can really, really help. Tip number seven is that you want to not take it too seriously <laughs> or put too much 
effort into them unless you want to, right? If you're the kind of person or you have the kind of brand that requires you to be like really made up and dressed up and, you know, makeup and hair and all of the things or whatever it is that you do, um, then that's totally cool. But I just don't want you to think that that's required. Um, I think I'm probably a pretty good example of somebody who doesn't, <laughs> doesn't care. I just don't care that much about it. Um, I would rather just like be comfortable and be myself. And frankly, with the amount of content that I choose to create and to put out, and also with the size of the business I have now, it is not realistic for me to only film content when I'm in perfect condition, right? It doesn't make sense. I would never get it done. Um, so I always have my hair up. I'm okay not getting dressed up. Um, I, this is also consistent though with my brand, right? Um, I don't take myself too seriously. I'm not super stuffy. I'm not standoffish, I hope. Um, but that's just, that is me. That is like me as a person. So it makes sense that that would be my brand. And so it's okay to do reels like that. I just wanted to share this with you because I don't want people to think that you can only make reels if you do do them highly stylized or made up. And there's a lot of room for people who are just being themselves. I actually think that having really good lighting um, is more important than the way that you look. Remember, most people are just thinking about how they look. But having clear, bright lighting, um, a clear background, like not too cluttered or dark of a background, um, I think that those kinds of things actually go a longer way just because it like attracts people's attention. It looks like bright and inviting. Um, but I think that that is really helpful. So personally, I'd rather just look like myself, be myself, um, also be consistent with what your experience is going to be if you come in to my company, right? If you purchase something from me, you're not going to get a super stylized made up person anyway. So like, this is me, this is what you get. So I kind of want to be consistent in that way. So there's definitely room to do that. Tip number eight is that you have to look for trending music or audio clips on the Reels tab of Instagram. There's a little arrow when you go to the Reels tab on the bottom of your phone um, on Instagram when you start looking at reels and you start scrolling up and scrolling through those reels, you'll see where the name of the audio appears. There sometimes is an arrow that's like pointing straight up and that will mean that that audio is trending. So I don't necessarily only pick things that are trending, but I definitely look and I see whether that's something that I could kind of translate to what I do. What I always do is I watch those trending reels and my mind and instantly, like I think this just becomes like a habit. So this is something you have to start practicing doing and then it becomes very natural. But when I look at those, I think like, oh, okay, she was talking about it from this angle. I can totally see how I can... I can flip this around. And actually at the end of today's episode, after I'm done going through the 10 tips, I'm actually going to show you from like start to finish exactly um, how I go from like concept of reel to the reel that you see on Instagram. Um, like all the steps, the tools that I use, the methods, how I get it all done and quickly too. So I'm going to share that with you at the end. So watch all the way through. Tip number nine is that you want to get inspiration from related entrepreneurs or, or businesses. So that doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be people in your field. Like I don't look at anybody who does what I do because um, that just really helps me to keep my eye on the prize. Go back to episode one of On Your Terms, um, community over competition is BS. <laughs> but um, I like to look at what people um, in my space do who serve a similar audience. So for example, my friend Christina Gavalto, she's amazing with reels. She teaches people how to do reels. And the other day I saw her do a reel with Beyonce music um, where she was joking about like entrepreneurs wanting to drink, like being so excited to drink coffee in the morning and like getting pumped up and pumping themselves up for the day with coffee. And then the music like scratches and slows down only to be like only to show like the entrepreneur like super jacked up and like frazzled when she actually does go to start working because she's had so much coffee. And I instantly thought I could totally switch this up to somebody being excited. Like the beginning of the video was somebody being excited to start their own business, like super pumped to get online, to like open up their computer and all this kind of stuff. And then when the music changes, it's like them losing their shit because they realize that they don't have any legal protection. So I made a reel out of it and it was pretty good. It went pretty well. And I got a lot of people who ended up signing up for my stuff for it. So that's just an example where you can kind of see how like, oh, I see that she's using it in this way to like make this analogy, but this is the analogy that would apply 
apply in my industry or on my topic. And so I think that that can be really helpful. So that was a, that was kind of a double a double dip tip because because that audio was trending. And then I also was able to use like the inspiration of the analogy that she made and how she made the flip. Um, but mine was obviously totally different. It's a totally different industry. It had nothing to do with it. Um, but yeah, that's what reels are for. So that's, that's tip number nine. Okay, tip number 10 is a CIA tip that you will thank me for later, but make sure that you save all of your Reels drafts to your phone. I actually have a two-step process for this because I've lost them at both points, but uh, a little unknown fact until they recently added a small little note inside of the app, but if you delete the Instagram app off of your phone or lose it for some reason um, or log out of it, you actually lose your Reels as drafts, right? So I had one time made like a whole bunch of reels, saved them as drafts, deleted the app off of my phone for the weekend, and then lost all of the reels that I made. It was so upsetting because at that time I was spending like way more time. I was new and I didn't know how to how to make the reels. So I was spending so much time doing it and it was really, really frustrating. So now I have a two-step system in place. So when I make the reel directly on the platform, I save it um, as a draft before I even put any captions on it or anything. Then I go through so that I always have the video because you can always redo the captions, but it's like the video is the hardest part. So then when I go through and I put on the videos or the stickers and the captions and all that kind of stuff, then I save it again so that then I have a version of it on my phone that has all of that stuff on it as well. So now I'll have two versions, like the original video with nothing on the screen and then the one with all of the captions. So I save both of those on my phone. Highly recommend so that you don't lose it because, oh my gosh, I couldn't imagine putting in that much work and then losing it. I know so many people who have done that um, and it's super upsetting. So with those 10 tips, I want to get into both sharing my process of how I go from like start to finish creating a reel um, and also getting into the audience questions because I posted on Instagram that I was creating this episode and so many people submitted really good questions. So the first question was actually to exactly what I'm talking about with sharing my process. Stephanie on Instagram asked, what's your process for finding trending reels and music on Instagram and then turning them into reels of your own? So Here's my step-by-step -step process. First things first, I scroll through the reels like I was saying. I look to see that that are already on Instagram. I look to see what's trending with the arrow, but I also just watch other reels as well. And I try to see if there are any of those that stand out to me that either look like fun, like I would look forward to actually creating them because that's a that's like key in making sure that you get, get them done. Um, or that are just like, oh, that is perfect for what I do, right? That like, I can totally see how I could translate that or make that into a story. So I look through those and then I save them. So in order to save the audio, you click on the audio itself and then hit save audio at the top. I am somebody on Instagram who once I hit 10,000 followers, like earlier this year, um, for some reason, I all of a sudden then lost my Instagram music. So I only have like terrible, like unlicensed music on Instagram. I can't get any access to anything that's any fun. So um, this is really crucial for somebody like me because I have no other way to get audio. So I, I hit save audio and then I go into Asana, which is like my lifeblood. And so in Asana, I have a reels ideas section and like a planning section, a project it's called in Asana. And so in that project, I then put the name of the audio because on Instagram reels, the audios will sometimes have like a weird name or they'll have like the person's name, like the creator's name on Instagram. And so I put that in the task name. And then in the description of that task, I actually go through and I type out whatever the lyrics. So like, let's say it's a voiceover one and they say like, like there was the one I did from Schitt's Creek that's like, I have never seen somebody make so say so many wrong things one after another again and again in a row or something like that it was from David Rose and so I go in I type out the words that he says so first of all I can practice saying it a couple of times and or look at it on the screen um but then also I kind of then use that little script that I write out in the description box to put underneath of it what I want to say on the screen 
So I will put like in brackets or in all caps or something like this, like on uh, caption on screen. And then I will write out just and start to draft it out. So I see um, can, and make sure that it makes sense, right? So that I make, make it make sense with what I'm actually going to be saying or what the audio is saying in the background. Also, so that it makes sense for my business, so that it captures somebody's attention. Um, and then making sure that I'm like, okay, then what's the call to action going to be? Is the call to action going to be to follow me, to engage, to watch my workshop, to read the caption, you know, to whatever. So I write that all out in the section um, of the Asana task. It's at that time too that I go over probably one of the most important, if not the most important part of creating a reel in terms of making sure that other people actually want to click on it, watch it, find it on the explore page, which is what is the little caption, the sentence or phrase going to be that I'm going to choose for the cover photo. That is huge. If you're going to spend um, the bulk of your time on anything when creating reels, I honestly think it's that because nobody's going to watch your reel if you don't have anything, right? So I'm talking like the thing that you see on screen, the bubble you see on the screen before a reel starts playing, that part is crucial. Anytime that you can use language like you, your, something like that, that's super helpful. I think anything that's just going to like kind of quickly describe like four myths when it comes to working out or I don't know, something like that. Um, or I'll do like four red flags I see when legally protecting your business. Something like that is really just attention grabbing, but it also tells the person what they're going to see in this video. So a lot of times when I'm scrolling through and I see people on Instagram, it's like really flat uh, cover photo, whatever we're calling that, cover photo captions. Um, and it's just not something that I, if I didn't know them, like sometimes there are people that I know and I'm like, if I didn't know you, I would have no clue what this was actually about or why I should watch this reel. Like you want to think about if somebody saw this, somebody who was my ideal client was scrolling through and they're getting inundated with so much content what about this would grab their attention and make them want to stop the scroll and look at this? If you just spend a couple of minutes on that, you will just that tip alone, you will see like your real views, engagement, followers, whatever skyrocket. And that's, that's really what we want. So that's my answer to what's my process. Um, let me know definitely in the comments or send me a DM on Instagram at Sam Vanderreel. And if you want to know um, more about my process or you have any questions, of course, but I have a couple other audience questions that I want to answer before we go today. So Rachel said, are they really worth your time and energy? It seems like my casual reels do better than my business one. So that's a really good question, Rachel. And I would say, you know, hopefully after you've listened to this episode, you would see that they're worth your time and energy if you're going to do them with a purpose. I don't think like doing them without a purpose, like if you're just doing them and you don't really have any sort of plan or any clear defined goal as to why you want to do them, then it's not worth your time and energy, right? Also, if you're not, it's kind of like our health, right? Like if you're not sleeping and drinking water and like moving your body or getting some sunlight or like practicing some self-care or something like this, we, we're not really in a position to like add on other stuff, right? That's kind of how I see it when it comes to content. So if you're not nurturing like the SEO content of your, of your business's house, um, then you're not really in a position yet to add on like fun stuff, experimental stuff. So I would be more concerned of like, what's your content hub, right? What, what are the thing? what's the main piece of content that you're creating that's SEO driven, that's optimized, that people can find you, all that kind of stuff. Whether it's a podcast episode, a YouTube episode, a blog post, and then maybe even like mesh together. But if you're not doing that already, or you feel like you don't even have that process down, then maybe you can wait to add this on right? Or you can take like an experimental fun approach to it and follow some of the tips in today's episode. And then I would say that they would be worth your time and energy in terms of doing this for your business. If you're here to run a business, you want to grow an online business, then I would say the reels should be in support of that, right? I would also be curious though, Rachel, when you said it seems like my casual reels do better than my business ones. Well, 
I don't think there's anything wrong with casual ones, right? Because uh, I know Rachel and I know her personality and I know what she does and I, they're they're not that different, right? So in terms of casual, like making people slow down and take care of themselves, nurture themselves, be sweet and kind to themselves, practicing meditation, like those are things that I would say are more casual um, that you do, but then I think that there's just like a really nice way. First of all, you could use those for engagement reels, but there's also just a nice way that you can translate those into like a call to action to what you do to a freebie, to a workshop, to something, right? So I don't think that just because something is casual doesn't mean it still can't be in support of your business. Another person, anonymous, says um, she submitted a question saying, I have a fear of being seen versus just my brand or my business. Do you have any advice for me? So I really struggle with this question when it comes to online business and people want to know if they can have an online business without being visibly present, um, like without showing their face, without talking on camera. Um you know, I just, I have a hard time uh, giving any answer other than my honest opinion, which <laughs> in general, which is just that I would find it very hard to believe that someone could build a business these days without doing this stuff. Does it mean that you have to share every last detail about yourself or your life? No, definitely not. People are here to be educated, to learn from you, to have fun with you, to get to know you in a way, right? But you don't need to share like all of yourself. There can be little parts and pieces of yourself that you can share. But even if you don't talk about yourself or your personal life or your hobbies or your interests, which I still think would hurt your business, I don't know how you would build a successful online business these days on social media um, without talking to camera, doing video. I mean, not only is the whole world moving in, in a direction of video, and now it's like not just video, but fast video, you know, like quick clips of video, but we also are on these platforms that are all visually driven, right? Instagram is a visual platform. It started as a photograph platform. Now it's moving into video. TikTok's all video. Facebook is like, you know, it's whatever. It's posting things, but it's still posting pictures and they push things like lives and like rooms and groups and I don't know, whatever else. So the, these platforms are all visual platforms. And what I believe is that in an online business, we get the benefit of being able to like work from anywhere, do anything kind of stuff. But in order to shortcut the uh, like the trust and the, and the connection that would be required that you might form uh, in a different way, maybe even faster with somebody in person, you have to show your face. So I personally wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't want to buy from somebody if it was a if it was a service based business, right? If it's a business where I'm going to sign up to coach with like you're going to be my coach or you're going to be my mentor. I'm going to take a course from you. I personally, this is just me, would not buy from somebody who I probably didn't get to know first. You know, I'm, I think back to anything I've purchased, anybody I've worked with, I've been attracted to their personality, to their way of doing business, to how they run their life, um, what their life looks like, like that it emulates my values and that that's something that I want to do. So that's just my two cents on it in general is that I, I think, you know, I would encourage you to work on this if you want, if you want to, right? If you want to have this kind of business and if you want to have an online business, I would encourage you to dive into this fear of being seen. Um, I think that actually creating a business has been a beautiful opportunity for, for me to work through that. I wouldn't say I'm over it by any means. I think everyone has a, a degree of a fear of being seen. I certainly have that as well. And I think that this opportunity is just, yeah, giving me like a really good opportunity to try to work through it. And I know a lot of my friends have as well. And then I would just encourage you to think about whether or not this kind of business is for you, because it's not like this is the perfect or only way to run a business. There are many, many ways. There are also other kinds of businesses, right? So service-based businesses, I think in particular, are rely on a personality and more of a personal brand, but many other kinds of businesses don't. Um, so there are many, many options out there, I think, for somebody who wants to have a business where there's not so much personal involvement. It's not reliant on the on the face of a founder or something like that. And so I would, in, I would encourage you to dive into that. Okay, so I hope that you enjoyed all 10 of these tips about how to create reels that actually support and grow your business. Um, I hope you enjoyed some of the legal ones too, in case you've had any of those questions. Overall, I would just encourage you to keep reels fun, experiment them with like you do with any other kind of content in your business. 
but have them make sense for your business. Have them have a purpose. Otherwise, this is just kind of like an energy leak in your business where you're pouring in all this time, money, and effort into something that there's not really any return for. So I would give it some thought about how you can um, create evergreen reels that actually support your business. Play with it. Don't wait until things are perfect. They don't need to look like everybody else's you can just have fun with them. <laughs> so if you enjoyed this, let me know. DM me on Instagram at Sam Vanderweel. And of course, it's helpful for you to subscribe, like, follow, do all the things. Um, I really appreciate it. Let me know what your number one takeaway was from this episode. Um, I can't wait to see what you implement with Reels. Thanks so much for listening to the On Your Terms podcast. Make sure to follow on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you like to listen to podcasts. You can also check out all of our podcast episodes, show notes, links, and more at samvanderreelen.com slash podcast. You can learn more about legally protecting your business and take my free legal workshop, Five Steps to Legally Protect and Grow Your Online Business at samvanderreelen.com. And to stay connected and follow along, follow me on Instagram at samvanderreelen and send me a DM to say hi. Just remember that although I am a attorney, I am not your attorney and I am not offering you legal advice in today's episode. This episode and all of my episodes are informational and educational only. It is not a substitute for seeking out your own advice from your own lawyer. And please keep in mind that I can't offer you legal advice. I don't ever offer any legal services, but I think I offer some pretty good information.